responses. So the central role of the T H cells is the immune responses. So after T H cells recognize specific antigens presented by an antigen presenting cell, they can initiate several key immune responses. These include selection of appropriate effector mechanisms such as B cell activation or T cell generation, induction or proliferation or inappropriate effector cells, and enhancement of the functional activities of other cells such as granulocytes, macrophages, natural killer cells. There are four populations of TH cells. These are TH0, TH1, TH2 and TH17. When naive TH0 cells encounter antigens and secondary lymphoid tissues, they are capable of differentiating into inflammatory TH1 cells. Helper TH0 cells become a TH1, a TH2 or a T17 cell, which depends upon the cytokines in the environment which is influenced by the antigen. For example, some antigens stimulate IL-4 production, which favours the generation of Th2 cells, while other antigens stimulate IL-12 production, which favours the generation of Th1 cells. Th1, Th2 and Th17 cells affect different cells and influence the type of immune response for this. Cytokines produced by Th1 cells activate macrophages and participate in the generation of cytocytic lymphocytes, resulting in a cell-mediated immune response. In contrast, cytokines produced by Th2 cells help to activate B cells as a way in antibody production. Recently, Th17 cells, are, which are produced by IL-17 in humans in response to IL-1, IL-6 and IL-23. TGF beta is important for autoimmune is important for Th17 differentiation in mice, but not in humans. IL-17 enhances the severity of some autoimmune diseases, including multiple sclerosis, inflammatory bowel disease and rheumatoid arthritis. As well as this, each subpopulation can exert inhibitory influences on other. Interferon gamma produced by Th1 cells inhibits proliferation of Th2 cells and differentiation of Th17 cells. And IL-10 produced by Th2 cells inhibits production of interferon gamma by Th1 cells. Also, IL-4 can inhibit production of Th1 cells and differentiation of Th17 cells. The immune response is directed to a type of response that is required to deal with the pathogen encountered cell mediated responses for intercellular pathogens or antibody responses for extracellular pathogens. So, B cells are not the best antigen presenting cell in a primary antibody response. Dendritic cells and macrophages are more efficient. With some minor modifications, the Hapton carrier model of cell to cell interactions also applies to interactions in a primary antibody response. In a primary response, the Th2 cell first encounters antigens presented by dendritic cells and macrophages. The prime Th2 cells can then interact with B cells that have encountered antigen and are presenting antigenic peptides in association with class 2 MHC molecules. The B cells still require two signals for activation. One signal is a binding of antigen to the surface immunoglobulin and the second signal comes from a CD40, CD40 ligand engagement during Th2 B cell to cell interaction. In addition, cytokines produced by the Th2 cells help B cells proliferate and differentiate into antibody secreting plasma cells. As a consequence of our primary response, many memory T and B cells are produced. Memory B cells have a high affinity immunoglobulin receptor due to affinity maturation, which allows them to bind and present antigens at much lower concentrations than required for macrophages or dendritic cells. In addition, memory T cells are more easily activated than naive T cells. Therefore, the B cell and T cell and T8 cell interactions are sufficiently generate sufficient antibody responses. It is not necessary, although it can happen, to prime memory T8 cells with antigen presented by dendritic cells and macrophages. Produced by activated T cells not only stimulate proliferation and differentiation of B cells, they also help regulate the class of antibody produced. Different cytokines influence the switch to different classes of antibodies with different effect, effect, effort functions. In this way, the antibody response is tailored to suit the pathogens encountered. For example, Ig antibodies for parasitic worm, infe worm infections. The responses to T-independent antigens do not require cell-to-cell -cell interactions. The polymeric nature of these antigens allow cross-linking of antigen receptors on B cells resulting in activation. No secondary responses, affinity maturation or clash switching occurs. Responses to T-independent T antigens are due to the activation of a subpopulation of B cells called CD5 plus B cells, also called B1 cells, which distinguish from conventional B cells that are also CD5 minus, also called B2 cells. So let's look at B1 cells. B1 cells, also known as CD5 cells, are the first B cells to appear in ontogeny. They express surface IgM, but little or no IgD, and they primarily produce IgM antibodies, primarily somatically mutated germline genes. Antibodies produced by these cells are of low affinity and are often poorly reactive, which means they bind multiple antigens. Most of the IgM in serum is derived from CD5 plus B cells, 
A CD5 plus B cells do not give rise to memory cells. An important characteristic of these cells is they are self-renewing, unlike conventional B cells, which must be replaced on the bone marrow. They are also found in peripheral tissues that are the predominant B cells in perinatal ca peritoneal cavity. They are a major defence against many bacterial pathogens that characteristically have polysaccharides in their cell walls. The importance of these cells in immunity is illustrated by the fact that many individuals with T-cell defects are still able to resist many bacterial pathogens. T-cell interactions and cell mediated immunity, generation of T-C cells in response to endogenous antigen cytosols. Cytotoxic T lymphocytes are not fully mature when they exit the thymus. They have a functional TCR that recognises antigen, but they cannot, but they cannot lag the target cell. They must differentiate into fully functional effective T cells. Cytotoxic cells differentiate from a pre-CTIL in response to two signals. Specific antigen in the context of class 1 MHC on a stimulator cell, cytokine is produced by Th1 cells, especially IL-2 and interferon gamma. CTL mediated lysis. So CTL killing is antigen specific. To be killed by a CTL, the target cell must bear the same class 1 MHC associated antigen that, that triggers pre-CTL differentiation. This requires cell to cell contact. CTLs are triggered to kill when they recognise the target antigen associated with a cell surface MHC molecule. Adjacent cells lacking the appropriate target MHC antigen are not affected. CTLs are not injured when the target lies when they when they lies target cells. Each CTL is capable of killing some sequentially numerous target cells. So there are various mechanisms this takes place. So some involve direct cell to cell contact and others result from the production of certain cytokines. In all cases, death of the target cell is a result of apoptosis. So, look at the first one, it's FAS and TNF mediated killing. Once generated CTLs express FAS ligand on the surface, which binds to FAS receptors on target cells, TNF alpha secreted by CTLs can bind to TNF receptors on target cells. The FAS and TNF receptors are closely related family receptors, which when they account for the ligands for trimers of receptors. These receptors also contain death domains in the cytoplasmic portion of the receptor, which alter trimerization and which can activate caspases that induce apoptosis in the target cell. The second way is granule me mediated killing. Fully differentiated CTLs have numerous granules that contain perforin and granzymes. Upon contact with target cells, perforin is released and it polymerizes to form channels in the target cell membrane. Granzymes, which are serine proteases, either enter the target cell through the channels and activate caspases and nucleases in the target cell, resulting in apoptosis. Producing an activation of macrophages in response to endogenous antigen vesicles. So macrophages play a central role in the immune system. So they are involved in initial defence as part of the immune system, antigen presentation to T8 T helper cells, and they have various effective functions such as cytokine production, bactericidal and tumorocidal activities. Indeed, macrophages play an important role not only in immunity but also in the organisation of tissues. However, because of their potent activities, macrophages can also damage tissues. See the different functions of macrophages which involve inflammation. Production of IL sets, TNF alpha, IL1, in which acts as a pyrogen. You have the immunity, selection of lymphocytes to be activated, the activation of lymphocytes. You have reorganization of tissues, secretion of a variety of factors. You have damage to tissues, which involves hydrolase, hydro, hydrolases, hydrogen peroxide production, complement C3A and TNF alpha production. You also have antimicrobial action, oxygen independent production of hydro, hydrogen peroxide, superoxide, oxygen independent production of acid hydrolases, and you have anti tumor activity as well. Toxic factors, hydrogen peroxide, complement C3s, proteases, etc. Many of these macrophage functions can only be performed by activated macrophages. Macrophage activation can be defined as quantitative alterations to the expression of various gene products that enable the activated macrophage to perform some function that cannot be performed by the rest of the macrophage. Macrophage activation is an important function of Th1 cells. When Th1 cells get activated by an antigen presenting cell, such as a macrophage, they release interferon gammon, which is one of the two signals required to activate a macrophage. Lipopolysaccharides from bacteria or TNF alpha produced by macrophages exposed to bacterial products deliver a second signal. Effective mechanisms employed by macrophages include production of TNF alpha, which can induce apoptosis, nitric oxide and other reactive nitrogen intermediaries, reactive oxygen intermediates, cationic proteins, and hydrolytic enzymes. Macrophage activation by Th1 cells is very important in protection against many different pathogens. For example, the bacteria Pneumocytis cystis carinini, which is an extracellular pathogen, is controlled in normal individuals by activated macrophages. It is, however, a common cause of death in AIDS patients because they lack Th1 cells. 
as well as this, mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is an intracellular pathogen that resides in vesicles, is not efficiently killed by macrophages unless they are activated. This, why, this is why this infection is a problem in AIDS patients. What they look at is activation of natural killer cells. So cytokines produced by activated Th1 cells, particularly IL-2 and interferon gamma, also activate natural killer cells pr to become lymphokine activated killer tart cells, LAK cells. L LAC cells are able to kill virus infected and tumour cells in a non mhc restricted manner. Indeed, susceptibility of target cells to killing by natural killer and LAK cells is inversely proportional to the expression of MHC class 1 molecules. The effect of mechanisms used by N natural killer cells and lymphokine activated killer cells to kill target cells is similar to those used by CTLs such as perforin and granzymes. Natural killer cells and LAK cells are also able to kill antibody coated targets by ADCC.